Uh, we have special guest on the show today, PMC, Punjabi MC, a.k.a. Raj. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Sonia. How are you doing? I'm very, very well. And, and I agree with Tam that it is, uh, this is going to be a massive trip down memory lane with all the music. I'm go- going through some of the track listings here. Yeah. Can't remember <laughs> which one came before which one because no. all the albums have been really strong. Okay. Um, well, let's not uh, dwell too much on the past. Do you, but get, <laughs> do you get mixed up yourself? Yeah, I do. I do. I mean, I, I don't me actually know better. how many albums I've actually released or anything. You so, don't know how many? because, no, I mean, you know, if you say to me what was my first biggest hit or what was my first hit, they were kind of getting bigger and bigger. So, you know, for me, something like my first album was a kind of a hit. You know, I was happy that it was out and I felt a bit of relief and stuff. But at the same time, um, you know, it wasn't really a huge hit compared to what I would call a hit now, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. When was that first album out? What, what was the year? In the 90s, late 90s. Late 90s. <laughs> yeah. Like, when Going you back look back at it now, because yeah. you've just got, got a new album out now. Yeah. When you look back at the, you know, the very first album that came out, you know, how does it feel? Does it, do you feel like you've changed loads in that time? Yeah, I think music's changed anyway. Like, Bhangra music has changed, you know, from the the bands like Safri and Mulkey, you know, doing their thing. It was, like, huge when Forever Gold came out, you know. And loads of stuff like that. And then, you know, obviously, uh, Bali Sagu, PMC came on the scene and that sort of vibe, Apache Indian. And it's like, just changed. And, and then, obviously, like, um, RDB, people like that came on the scene, came with, you know, Sundar Rutter and people like that. And, it, you know, changed it again, you know. And so, it's just, it's, it's like the whole music sort of vibe, the kids have changed. So, yeah. you know, that's what I'm saying. So I, I haven't been in the game all the way through that, by the way, but I'm just saying. Well, I'm, I'm going to really enjoy interviewing you, actually, because with uh, quite a lot of other people, I've interviewed them before. Uh, but with you, even though we've bumped into each other, mm. we know each other from, like, sort of outside... You've not. I've never actually done a radio interview with you. We've okay. not done a full, long, in-depth right. kind of that's right, yeah. chat. So uh, I'm looking forward to this. Are you looking okay. forward to this? <laughs> I am. <yeah. laughs> You're like, oh, um, hmm. what's she going to ask me? Hmm. Well, everything. Okay. <laughs> Where were you born? I was born in Coventry, in Wardsgrave Hospital. Yeah. And uh, at that time, we lived in Fosal. I kind of lived up in Fosal up until we moved to the whole Bronx. <laughs> so yeah. Was that, that a big change? Yeah, in a way, but it, was, it wasn't too far away. So it's just you know, and and also like the school I used to go to called President Kennedy School. Yeah, and uh, that was in Ho- near Holbrooks, kind of. So it was near my school. So okay. we used to walk past that kind of area anyway. So it wasn't that much of a change. But I mean, we still had the shop. Uh, my mum's got a shop on Fosal Road. So has she really? Yeah. Does she have it now? Yeah, she's well, she's still got it right right now. It's like the HQ for the Punjabi Bazaar, which is like my online shop as well. So okay, but yeah, she's uh, you know she's still there, <laughs> you know, because she'd. I've got um, obviously I've got like assistants, whatever, like the actual people that work in there and stuff. You know, is your mum listening to the show right now? Uh, maybe possibly she's if- like, she's actually saying to me she wanted to come o- come in to the interview and stuff, but I, I says look, you know. You know, you might freeze up because it's a lot of pressure out there in the big game. <laughs> in the studio, mum. You may not be able to handle it. Yeah. But Raj the mummy ji, and did you see program son there, hun? Sanu phone karo. Oh eight four five nine double four zero double four five. It would be great if your mum rang. Yeah. I'd love it if we yeah. could get your mum on. Yeah. Mm. Like, so but you she does like to catch the, the programmes on, on, on the uh, iPlayer as well. So, oh, that's you know. bless. Yeah. But listen, I've got to ask you. Mm. So here you are, you're growing up, right? You go to school and your mum has this shop. Yeah. And how many brothers and sisters are you? Just me and my brother. Yeah. And is yeah. he older or younger? He's younger than me. He, he, he's actually uh, living in America right now. Okay. He's in San Francisco, but... You know, yeah, I mean, we used to, our shop was opposite the Godwara, so we, a lot of the, like, the Gyanis and that from India used to come in. And also, you know, we used to sell, uh, like, uh, cassettes, you know, like, from the day, you know. So is this where your love of music starts to develop? Yeah, that's where develop. I heard uh, Mulkeet and all that. And, you know, um, <laughs> we used to have the posters. So we, we, used to have, we used to sell a little bit of uh, tapes and, uh, you know, tapes. It was tape in those days, okay. I'm afraid to so, say. And how old are you now? Right now? Yeah. 31. <laughs> Oh, you thirty-one. Mm. Okay, so you would have been growing up at a time when Bhangra music was pretty strong in this country, yeah, wasn't it? Huge, huge. So, so gold, the golden era, really. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the live gold, up. you know, brought me kind of a lot into Bhangra. But then I looked deeper into Bhangra and found albums like Diamonds from Hira. 
Yeah. And then I thought, you know what, that's phenomenal, kind of, you know. Great um, album. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember, like, my cousins and that used to be you know, going to the shows, you know, hear our shows and Did stuff. Did you go? Did you start going to any of the shows? Yeah, I, mean, I, I went, obviously, when I got old enough, you know. Did you go to daytime? I mean, uh, when I went, yeah, I think, you know, the, a lot of, it was a Charnock was just kind of fading away as well. So, I, I you know, I, I, I went when the DJ era started. Yeah. And I kind of started it, so... <laughs> Well, you did. I've got this track here, which was a massive hit. Uh, it's one of our favourites, without doubt. Um, and it's Joggy. Now, do you want yeah. to tell us about this track? Yeah, this track was actually mixed live, believe it or not, um, in a club in Japan, you know. And so we just, like, <clears throat> basically used to just sample the beat. And then, you know, we did, obviously it wasn't the only song we mixed like that that night, but it would come out really good, so tried to produce it you know this is the full story of it and then he couldn't get the same feel or whatever so we left it kind of loose and uh, dj stin who um you know well you know he was he went to who now works here of yeah, course yeah yeah yes. i mean he went to japan with me then we used to dj for me you know uh, and so played the doll and stuff so yeah it was um he was part of the production on that and so that's it i mean we put that together and then believe it or not it kind of like was when it's the mainstream all these years later and stuff it's great tune let's have a listen to this punjabi mc our special guest on the bbc asian network this morning it must feel quite amazing, like listening to that. That just feels like ages ago now. It, it does because it was uh, it was done so quick, like I say, in the club, and we had it. We recorded it onto DAT digital audio tape. Yeah. we used to use in those days, and then uh, we heard it back, and it was brilliant. You know, the mix sounded so good, and it still sounds that like good right now. And like you know, the vocals of people like Muhammad Sadiq. Yeah. We, did you grow up with those traditional desi artists yourself? Yeah, basically that was a selection from my parents and uh, also like DJ Stin's parents and <laughs> other people's parents. You know, records that we used it's to. It's pure gold, isn't it? Yeah. This stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did go to uh, Ladiana the first time I went. You know, to record. I did go to the shops and buy quite a lot of uh, vinyls, desi vinyls and stuff. Because yeah, it was it's pure gold because I didn't they the vocals as well. They record on one side and the percussions on one side so it's quite good to mix now obviously there was all of us lot who loved it because we liked the the fusion of like you know the the the, the modern style of mixing uh with the traditional sounds and it was it was good i think generally for, for the music scene but did you get any kind of reaction from the older lot saying what have you done to our traditional tracks uh, yeah, I mean, obviously you get the, uh, you know, that you get the across the board view. Obviously, oh, the guy, yeah, <laughs> you what have you done to that, that song? You know? yeah. And yeah, you did, but, um, you know, and the funny thing is that obviously people still had the original version to listen to, so it wasn't like I went and erased their... Burnt it. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, erased their CD and replaced it. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, so, you know, I mean, it, I don't know, but, because it was quite fresh, but I think what it is, uh, there is a lot of stuff that you hear which isn't done so well, you know, like rap with Bangalore, Bangalore people started going a little bit you know dissy for it a little what bit. made what were your influences or who were your influences what made you want to mix up desi music in this way well my i, I listened to hip-hop mainly first and foremost as what well. i kind of like listened to public enemy and you know ice t these old school rappers you know roxanne shanty because well, as soon as that like, hip-hop came out the dj thing when i seen kids like the show used to show union square in new york where the kids used to dj and they used to do like um switching which is like playing the same beat over and over again on two decks you know i seen all these things and i it was just kind of like triggered something in me every time so i always kind of like started rapping and writing rhymes and you know so i mean I always just uh, grew up listening to hip-hop and at the same time obviously my parents and my uncles they was listening to manik and shinda guys like that you know so you know and so I used to go to the wedding and and play a bit of good man in those days and you know it, so it's like um yeah i mean it had both sides uh going on and the film bollywood films and obviously those uh kind of uh, old bollywood songs again you know big kind of very influential watching all of that yeah and were you quite clear about your own identity when you were growing up at this point as well because you're taking a bit of hip-hop and you've got like you've mentioned the bollywood movies and then you've got your traditional mm. monarch and stuff and you know are you quite comfortable with who you are at this point yeah or? you know what it, you know what it is uh, again like um the first concept i've ever seen of that was actually in birmingham when i seen mix and claire in his old unit. Wow, sorry. Whoa, I just felt dizzy at the, 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 the blast from <laughs> the a name I haven't heard in so long. Yeah, there. I yeah. mean, he used to have a little road show and stuff and a unit and stuff, you know. Did, or yeah. a big road show, I don't know, I can't remember. But, I mean, I seen him, what he was doing uh, was mixing, like, a English record, you know, which was, I can't remember, um, 
Jelly Bean or some guy, yeah, and um, and he's putting like a, a Bangla song, mixing a Bangla record on it, you know. And I just thought, again, I was like, whoa. So that's where I got the kind of idea of like, then. But I thought straight away, you know what? This is real music. You know, this is like the best of both. Yeah. You've got the bass line, you've got the percussion, you know. So that's so really. I mean, I just thought um, every time you know, I used to hear Dr. Dre or some some break like that. You know, I used to always think, you know, put a doll on there. Well, here's another track. This is your next big track, uh, Jin the Mahi. Mm. Which do you remember the reaction this got and putting this track? What's the story behind putting this track together? This track um, again, I went we went to India Punjab um, and like basically recorded the song up, and um, you know. He got the four singers on there. You know, Junju again wasn't uh, uh, hadn't been heard of by anyone. So he came, he came in the studio to do some of the stuff and started singing this one as well. But you know, we were like, look, we want it, we want Marnik Shinda, we want other kind of like known guys on there. But when he started singing, I just thought, you know what, he's a phenomenal singer. You know, he just he slammed that down. You know, what was he like working with? Yeah, very professional. You know, quick to work with. You know, just <laughs> you know, they just come in and just record and off they yeah, go yeah yeah they get you know they sort out whatever they're gonna it's like the voice or whatever and then they just bang it um out but you know um sometimes obviously those uh, singers uh, in punjab they do sort of, like sing a lot of songs and then over sing songs and you know so some of them aren't so good but yeah you know but, but they can do a lot nice is this one of your favorites Jindama, yeah, it, it was uh, actually, um, like, we used to call it the National Anthem because, like, it was guaranteed, you know, used to... Always get people on the dance yeah. floor. I say that used to because we've got the new one now, Jutti, from the new album, The Raj. Yes. And that's, like, the new part two, Jindama part two, you know. That's the big one. Yeah. I'm going to play that later. Do you kind of feel responsible for the development of Lab Jandra? Genjua, um, I well, I guess so. I mean, he's obviously a very talented, talented, you know, person. So at the end of the day, you know, he's uh, was destined to do what he was destined to do. But I mean, I, I obviously took his vocal, and you know, um, and so it was fate that kind of we worked together. And this was like almost this was the start of that trend of um, producers from here going to India and discovering vocalists over there. Yeah, wasn't there? This yeah, um, but I mean, that's right, because uh, they, I was actually the first person to do that, you know, like, yeah. uh, I went with uh, Icky and uh, my friend Iqbal, sorry, and Suki, so how was my friend as well, so they, they kind of, like, set the trip up for me and uh, helped me with the music and stuff, but, uh, I mean, the thing is, it's, uh, they, you know, it, we went to see Marnik, I know Marnik had already been to England and had gone to Planet and recorded vocals and but n there wasn't anyone interested in kind of like him, because he was apparently, you know, lost, kind of like, of the you know who's passed it or whatever but uh oh. you know when i f like, obviously i've done an album where i used to record his vocal off vinyls and mix them down so uh when icky was said to me look he, you know we can go to punjab and record manik and shinda and people you know so I thought, like, let's go yeah yeah and you know I, I remember like it was like you know people didn't really even know what he'd sound like now or anything you know all his new stuff so it was a big conceptually it was really good the album grassroots because you know, we do, you, do you think you can find that calibre, that level of singer in this country? No, I don't think so. Because I think, you know, if you want a Punjabi singer, you've got to go to Punjab, basically. Um, but, I mean, I think, you know, obviously, uh, you, know, you know, that was... The, it's the, everyone's catching up. You know, like, same with the rapper. You know, if you want a real rapper, go to New York or L.A. Right. You know, or, but obviously now in America, you've got everyone everywhere. And what do you think of so many musical music producers then jumping on a plane and finding artists out there for their albums? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, there is a, obviously a lot of producers who are now, you know, decided that they want to, like spend some t time in the studio you know whatever but um you know it's all good you know for for me i think the, the more the better really you know um and, and it, uh, occasionally like a good track comes from it so you know you, so it's all good you know now we're talking to punjabi mc here on the show if you want to speak direct to pmc then feel free to get in touch with us um maybe you've got, um, you've got a question or a favorite track you just want to say hi 08459 445 is the number to call if you want to speak directly to pmc on the show 08459 445 you can text as